The psalmist says this in Psalm 150, and I'm reading it from the message. Praise God in his holy house of worship. Praise him under the open skies. Praise him for his acts of power. Praise him for his magnificent gestures. Praise him with a blast in the trumpet. Praise by strumming soft strings. Praise him with castanets and dance. Praise him with banjo and flute. Praise him with cymbals and a big bass drum. Praise him with fiddles and mandolin. Let every living, breathing creature praise God. Hallelujah. We are living, breathing creatures who come to worship our God this morning who welcomes us as we welcome one another, apart though we may be. We raise our voices together with voices from across the world and indeed across in heaven as the angels sing his praise and glory too. We join together as we sing, praise my soul, the King of heaven. Prayer of Adoration and Confession. Let us pray. Living, loving Lord, your power is creative, sustaining, overwhelming yet comforting. We bow before you in worship with praise and devotion. We acknowledge your glory your holiness, your otherness, as we also acknowledge your availability as you come to us through your spirit this morning. 
you are not remote, unknowable, unknown. Because we have seen your face in the face of Jesus, your Son, our Lord. Your majesty takes our breath away. Just as we think we can say that we know you, you show us new things about yourself. We acknowledge your love, yet wonder and amazement at the depths of your love for us as we recognise that Jesus died in our place. You are holy and pure in far greater ways than our tiny, finite minds can understand. Yet you promise that you come to live in our hearts as we put our trust in you, clothing us with your right living. We bow before you in worship and adoration. Yet as we come face to face with your presence, we recognise our unworthiness, our sin, our lack of love. In the silence, we invite you to show us the things you want to change within us. Father, through your son's death on the cross, you offer us forgiveness. Your mercy and grace know no bounds. Gratefully, we accept and invite your Holy Spirit to be our guide day by day. In Jesus' name we pray and say together the words he taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Acts chapter three, verses one to 16. A lame beggar is healed. One day, Peter and John went to the temple at three o'clock in the afternoon, the hour for prayer. There, at the beautiful gate, as it was called, was a man who had been lame all his life. Every day he was carried to the gate to beg for money from the people who were going into the temple. When he saw Peter and John going in, he begged them to give him something. They looked straight at him and Peter said, Look at us! So he looked at them, expecting to get something from them. But Peter said to him, I have no money at all, but I give you what I have. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I order you to get up and walk. Then he took him by his right hand and helped him up. At once the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped up, stood on his feet and started walking around. Then he went into the temple with them, walking and jumping and praising God. The people there saw him walking and praising God, and when they recognised him as the beggar who had sat at the beautiful gate, they were all surprised and amazed at what had happened to him. Peter's message in the temple. As the man held on to Peter and John in Solomon's porch, as it was called, the people were amazed and ran to them. When Peter saw the people, he said to them, Fellow Israelites, why are you surprised at this? And why do you stare at us? Do you think that it was by means of our own power or godliness that we made this man walk? The God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has given divine glory to his servant Jesus but you handed him over to the authorities and you rejected him in Pilate's presence, even after Pilate had decided to set him free. He was holy and good, but you rejected him and instead you asked Pilate to do you the favour of turning loose a murderer. You killed the one who leads to life, 
but God raised him from death, and we are witnesses to this. It was the power of his name that gave strength to this lame man. What you see and know was done by faith in his name. It was faith in Jesus that made him well, as you can all see. Last week I asked you the question, what was your favourite Bible verse? Today I ask you another question. What is your favourite story from the Bible and from the New Testament in particular? I have many, but the one that Danella read for us this morning would rank fairly high up on my list of ones that I enjoy and like. God in his gracious love set me into a Christian home and I well remember sitting on mum and dad's knees hearing the stories from the Bible. And of course there is a chorus that goes along with this. Peter and John went to pray. No, I won't sing it. Peter and John went to pray. They met a lame man in the way and it ends up with he went walking and leaping and praising God following an encounter with the living God through human beings. His life was changed forever. We were thinking about Peter's example of how to share our faith last week and, and it continues on this week. Here then were men with a new energetic faith who met together to pray, to worship, to join together with those they loved and who they knew Jesus loved. And yet they still kept up some of their traditions. For Jews, prayer was essential. It was vital and it was vital to meet together to pray. And so there were set times of prayer three o'clock in the afternoon was one of them. And that was why Peter and John went to the temple. There are some traditions that hold us back in our faith, but there are others which, like the baby, shouldn't be thrown out with the bath water. I wonder what tradition is important to you? Does it help your faith or does it hinder it? The story of this man conjures up in my mind similarities to stories, other stories of Jesus meeting and healing folk. Think of the friends of the paralysed man who brought him to Jesus for healing. Think of the man lying at the pool for 38 years and Jesus says, do you want to be healed? And in my mind too sprang up the possibility of a similarity with the story of the widow's might. She giving her all and Jesus applauding that all. All stories where Jesus' power was seen through his action and his comments. I keep hearing from folk, who would have thought a couple of months ago that we would be living in the way that we're living now? We were so used to the life that we lived that we couldn't conceive of anything different. I wonder what the man thought day by day as he was brought to the temple by his friends and plonked at the gates. Would he have had any thought of a better life? Or would he merely be thinking, please God, give me enough money to allow me to live today? He was in for a shock. 
sadly and shockingly in this day and age we are all too aware of people who beg in our streets. Many sit with their eyes down occasionally saying please will you help me? Can you give me some money? It's not often that they will look you in the eye. I suspect the same was true for this man. He perhaps didn't have much hope of receiving anything. Most people, if they were going to give him anything, would drop a coin into his hand and walk on by without giving him really a second thought. Not so Peter and John, who stopped, who looked and said, look at us. This was to be no casual encounter. It was to be an encounter with the living God through an encounter with human beings. And that meant eye to eye contact. Jesus is the God who provides and insists on eye to eye contact or indeed eye to eye contact. Not for him the way up there untouchable unknowable God. Not for him being one God among many. Rather a personal friendship with the living God is what he offers all people. He offers it to you, he offers it to me, and he offers it to others through you and me in our ordinary, everyday lives. How do you react to name dropping? Most of us might roll our eyes, metaphorically of course, when people drop into the conversation that they've met someone famous. There is one name though that is vital to drop into the conversation and Peter has no hesitation in doing it. He well recognises that what is about to happen can never happen because of him, but because of the one he loves. Jesus Christ. Professor William Barclay says this, the apostles never regarded themselves as the source of power but only as channels of the power and then a wee bit later goes on to say the Christian knows that so long as he thinks of what I can do and what I can be there can be nothing but failure, frustration and fear. But we, when he thinks of not I, but Christ in me, there can be nothing but peace and power. My daily readings this week have been in the book of Joshua. On the morning that I was writing this passage, the passage was Joshua giving his final encouragement to, and instruction to his people. Time and again in that passage was the idea that it was God himself who had helped them to win the battles. Oh yes, they had had to do the fighting, but it was God who had provided the victory. That theme resonates throughout the Bible. God's power and provision, along with his people's physical action. The physical action of Peter in speech and in the hand reached out to help the man up. And did you notice? It was only when the man allowed his hand to be put into Peter's as he allowed himself to be lifted up that the healing took place. I suspect the man had little time to think through any result. But the result was 
strong feet, strong ankles. He'd never walked before and now look, now you couldn't stop him. His focus was praising God. This God who had come up close and personal, no social distancing there, provided a new way of living for this guy, a freer way of life, a life filled with new possibilities. New life because of an encounter with the author of life, God himself. This miracle gives Peter the opportunity to speak once more to the Israelites about what God has done and what they had done. Verse 15 in the New International Version reads, You killed the author of life, but God raised him from the dead. Peter concedes that they acted in ignorance, but then challenges them about that ignorance. After all, he says, Jesus' life, death and resurrection are all to be found in the Bible of their day, the Old Testament. Right from the beginning, God had a rescue plan for all who would put their trust in him. The God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, the God of history, their history, the God who revealed himself to Moses at the burning bush. The God who rescued his people from the Egyptians. The God who spoke through the prophets. This God put in plan, the rescue plan for all people, for all time, until the end of time. God chose his servant Jesus to bless you by making every one of you turn away from your wicked ways, says Peter. His servant, Jesus. His son, Jesus. And Jesus chose himself to be the way back to God. Through his death on the cross and his rising again, all in order that his people for all time might know the power of his Holy Spirit at work in their lives and through their lives. Battles and struggles there are aplenty in today's world. God is calling us, his people, in faith to share the good news of the love that God has for every person here on earth. He uses our voices, our ears, our eyes, our minds, our hands, our feet, our whole beings to do that. Yet it is in his power that we go. The man was healed by the powerful name of Jesus, but it was Peter who spoke the words and Peter whose hand helped the man up. Let us acknowledge then our need of Jesus, our living Lord, in our lives, bringing us forgiveness, the ability to turn from the ways that are wrong, and his Holy Spirit to help us live our lives for him day by day, in order that others might experience that life-changing experience of his love living in their own lives day by day. May it be so. Amen. Our prayers of intercession Short silences every so often will allow us to say our own prayers. God of life, energy, power, God of all life, thank you for the many stories in the Bible which show us the life-giving power that you offer your people 
and all people as they put their trust in you. You, the one true God, whose one desire is to be intimately involved in the life of your creation, invite us to bring our prayers to you in order that you might answer them. Thank you for the many answers we do see. Please help us to keep on praying when it seems as if no answer is forthcoming. Uppermost in our minds just now is the devastation being caused by the coronavirus. Devastation to family life, to our economy, to our lifestyles. Show us your way through, we pray. Bring comfort to those in distress, strength to those who are on the front line in so many different ways, and your wisdom to inform the actions of the politicians who have such difficult decisions to make. At the beginning of this Christian Aid Week, we use now one of their prayers. God of abundant life, we see your goodness all around us and we thank you for every part of it. From the plants and animals which play their part in complex ecosystems to the dry deserts and stormy seas which test the limits of life. We pray that in this time of climate crisis an ecological emergency, you may help us to rediscover your love of creation and to reflect that in our own lives. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, who speaks through unexpected people, thank you for the contemporary prophets who are challenging us to act on climate change, for indigenous people and their invaluable knowledge of the land and sea where they live, for scientists dedicating their careers to warning us about changes to the planet and for young people striking for their future. Please will you help those in power to hear their prophetic voices, help them to see beyond short-term political priorities and business plans and give them wisdom and courage when they face difficult decisions. God in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of second chances, we recognise the damage we have done to the earth and the injustice we see in society every day, all of it fueled by worship of profit and possessions. We pray for the coming of a better world, with justice, kindness and humility at its heart. We ask that you guide us to be co-creators of this new world, give us confidence to follow the prophetic voices, to stand against injustice to people and to our planet, so that together, in your strength, we might stop this climate crisis. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of relationship, you have placed us in families. You've given us friends and work colleagues. Thank you for them. In silence now, we bring before you the needs of those we know. Come to them with your comforting, strengthening, forgiving and healing love. May each one we have named know deep in their hearts today your presence with them. We also pray for ourselves. As you came to Peter, John and the other apostles, please place us where we can be used by you. Help us believe in your power to help us. Come to us now as we think of our own needs and fears.
we bring ourselves and our prayers to you, daring to pray in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. You might think that as a minister I always get to choose my favourite hymns. I don't. Because I always do try to choose hymns that fit in with the theme. But I'm going to indulge myself today. It is 20 years ago today since I was ordained into the full-time ministry. The 10th of May, the year 2000, in Uphall. God has blessed me richly with my family, especially Grace, my sister, my friends, and my church families in and around Perth, in Uphall, in Ashkirk and Selkirk, and more recently in Ettrick and Yarrow. It's a journey that I couldn't have taken without them and still take with you. But most of all, it's a journey that I couldn't have taken without God's living presence within me, guiding me, challenging me when I get things wrong, forgiving me and providing direction. My prayer has always been that he would teach me his ways and that he would give me the willingness and his strength to follow in them. I learned this hymn not that long before I started on this journey, and I truly believe that as we place ourselves in his care, he will provide for all our needs. So let us invite him to teach us to dance to the beat of his heart, and to follow in his way and in his love. Teach me to dance to the beat 
love of Jesus sustain you. The power of Jesus strengthen you. The joy of Jesus fill you. Go knowing the blessing of the presence of Almighty God, Father, Son and Spirit at work in your life and through your life, today and every day. Amen.